All right, shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Most High Elohim in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahushua HaMashiach, who the word ignorantly called Jesus Christ. This is the young Hebrew by the name of Shamar Yehuda, a.k.a. Slim Wolf the Jew. And today, we're just doing a quick little edification. Won't be too short, won't be too long. Uh, this, this is part one of uh, me, uh, books I recommend everybody in Israel get. Uh, we all know, keep in mind, this is this is all, we all uh, stay into the Bible. So this is definitely a, a, a copy of the 66 books I would recommend you get. And I also have a copy of the APOC that I recommend you all get. But right now we're going to go into this right quick. We're going to go into Genesis right quick. I'm going to show you something dealing with uh, the description of Esau. So we already know that... Uh, Dealing with Esau in the KJV, it says he came out red and hairy. We already know that, so we ain't gonna pull out KJV for that. But we're gonna pull out the hidden. This is uh out of the hidden truths. He brag scrolls complete 66 books by uh I think it's what was it? Who is it? It's by uh <clears throat> Rabbi Kifa and uh Rabbi Simon Simon. At Altif, that's who it's by. Uh, we're gonna go to Genesis and uh, we're gonna go to Genesis uh, 25 and uh, I'm gonna show you guys something right quick. And here it is Genesis 25 and 25. It says this hold on, y'all. So, like, y'all need my pen for the reading for the for y'all to follow up with me. It says this, and the first came out reddish brown. I don't know if y'all can see that. It says the first came out reddish brown and he was like a hairy garment all over so they called his name Esau said he was reddish brown but we know in the KJV it says he came out red and hairy like a garment you know what I'm saying that'll trip you up but here in the hidden truth he breaks scrolls it says he came out reddish brown and he was like a hairy garment so he was red bone and hairy he kind of sort of looked like you Zerio. Shalom Ak but he was hairy. All right. And uh, now we know in the KJV, it describes uh, David as ruddy. We're going to get two witnesses out of the Hebraic scrolls right quick. Show you guys what it says about. Uh, um, about um, King David. So we go to 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 12. Uh, yeah, it says this. What's going on, Arterius, man? How you doing, man? How you doing? It says this. And, oh, 1 Samuel 16 and 12. And it says, and he sent and brought him in. Now he was reddish black and of the pleasant looks and handsome to look at. Now, a lot of campers will try to play semantics and say, well, him being ruddy just meant he was handsome. You know, it just meant he would look good. But if that's the case, that means that there was no description of King David's skin color in KJV. That's not true. You know, see how it distincts the color of his skin and the way he looks. So he was red, bone, handsome, everything. This is what KJV said. Now we're going to go to 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 42. It says this right here. And when the Philistines looked about and saw David, he disdained him. For he was but a youth and reddish black and of pleasant looks. See, two witnesses right there. What's going on, Rashad? What's going on, Aurier? Grace and peace. Shalom, Sister Aurier Bat Yah. Also, then we're going to go to the book of Isaiah right quick. I'm going to show y'all. He hidden truth. You know, KJV can debunk the chart. But this right here can also help with the chart, too. We're going to go to Isaiah 11, 11. It'll tell you. Where, uh, these places are where we're scattered and the most high gonna gather us from and uh, we go to uh, Isaiah 11 11 right here and it says this and it shall come to pass in that day that Yahuwah shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria and Misraim in parentheses Egypt Pathros South Egypt Cush Sudan and Ethiopia Sadan means black in Arabia, in Arabic, by the way. Ethiopia, I know Ethiopia is black. Elam, Iran. Shinar, Ithritia, that's uh, the nationality of Nipsey Hussle. So that's already black people. What is that? Djibouti, Somalia. And from Hama, northwest, north Syria. And from the islands of the sea, 
Western nations, and Caribbean islands. The Caribbean islands. So that's dealing with the Western Hemisphere. You know what I'm saying? What's going on, uh, Brother Nathaniel? What's going on? What's going on? Grace and peace. Shalioso. Shalom. And he shall set up a banner for the next seat. So this is all dealing with that right here. This is this is where the most I gonna gather us from. All these nations were black, by the way. All right, so now we've already discovered how this book can help you with a lot of things, sir. As far as locations, it already has a lot of footnotes, but I highly recommend people get this. Like I said, this ain't gonna be too long. Uh, we know, and um, this is the Hebrew apocrypha um, coming out of the uh, what is it? Hold on, y'all. Coming out of the new Oxford Annotated Bible, New Revised Standard Version with the APOC. <laughs> and uh, we go to, we know in uh, 2nd Ezra 6 and 9, in the KJV it says, Esau is the end of the world. But this right here says, now Esau is the end of this age, and Jacob is the beginning of the age that follows. So we know that this right here, like I said in my Who is Esau video, this is not dealing with today. This is dealing with a certain error. Because you read verse 10, it says the beginning of a person is the hand and the end of a person is the heel. And we know when Jacob came out holding Esau's heel and it says, seek for nothing else, Ezra, the heel and the hand, Ezra. And uh, what else we got? Oh, yeah, we got the Old Testament suede picture right here. We got volume one and we got volume two. So we're going to bring this out a little bit uh, on the side right here. You got a. Uh, Everything that's in see, you see how this in Sway Picker for it's like reddish burgundy. Everything that's in reddish burgundy is in here. You know what I'm saying? We got the Apocalypse of Abraham, Apocalypse of Adam, Testament of Adam, Second Baruch, Third Baruch, Apocalypse of Daniel. I've read a lot of these books. First, second, third, Enoch, Apocalypse of Ezekiel, fourth book of Ezra, which is just second Ezra's, by the way. Greek Apocalypse of Ezra, Questions of Ezra, Revelations of Ezra. Visions of Ezra. So Ezra has a lot of books that we never read, you know, and a lot of people don't know this, but Ezra actually wrote Second Chronicles, um, Testament of Job, which proves that Job was an Edomite. You got Testament of Moses, the Apocalypse of Sedrach, Tate, Treaties of Shem, Sibylline Oracles, Testament of Solomon. I've read that before. Some people say it's witchcraft. I beg to differ. Testament of Three Patriots, Testament of Twelve Patriots, Apocalypse of Zephaniah. I've read that. It lines up perfectly with Zephaniah, does not contradict script at all. Now we're going to go into volume two. So you pick it for uh, the ones highlighted in blue, keep in mind, is in here. So we got the life of Adam and Eve. Uh, not, this is not to be confused with the first and second book of Adam and Eve, which mentions David and Solomon. When David and Solomon was on a planet like 300, like 3,300 years after the fact of Adam and Eve. So this book doesn't debunk Polly. I had Car, Letters of Aristeas, Aristeas the Exegate, Aristobulus. Some of these books come from Hellenistic Jews, so you gotta excuse these Greco Roman names. Artapanus, uh, Fourth Baruch, Cleodemus, Malchus, more Psalms of David. If y'all ain't no Psalm, David had more than just 155 Psalms, which is in the Sefer. Eldad, the Danite, and Modad. Um, you got, uh, what is it? Eupolemus, Suedo, Eupolemus, Ezekiel, the tra Tragedian. Uh, what we got? The Fragments of Suedo, Greek Poets, Suedo, Hecaticus. Uh, the Hellenistic Synagogue Prayers, like I said a lot. This part two of the Suede Bigger Fool was by Hellenistic Jews, G Jews who spoke the Greek language. Martyrdom and Ascension of Isaiah, the Ladder of Jacob, Prayer of Jacob. Janus and Jambres, which is quoted from 2 Timothy 3 and 8. Um, in Paul's letters, a lot of people don't. They, a lot of people say, well, hey, where the heck did Janus and Jambres came from? He came, it came from the book of Jasher. He quoted the book of Jasher. And um, that's why he said in 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given for an inspiration by Elohim. Because back then, those Jasher was considered scripture. And another thing I have to say is that they, they call it, quote unquote, suede pigrapha, but the which means it's not really scripture, but it really is. Because if that's the case, that means the apocrypha was hidden before we got here. When in actuality, we already knew about it because the Messiah quoted second Ezra and the, the, uh, the, the apostles quoted the apocrypha or the quote unquote apocrypha, which is a part of the Old Testament. So we already know it wasn't that couldn't have been that much hidden if the Messiah didn't quote it from it, you know. All right, here we got Joseph and Asenath. Now, before we continue, I'm going to go to Joseph and Asenath right quick. 
I'm gonna show y'all something dealing with it. Y'all gotta excuse me. I ain't open this in a minute. Grace and peace, sister uh, Alicia Donaldson. Uh, we're gonna go to uh, what is it? Joseph and Asenith. Where's it at? Y'all excuse me. I'm looking for it. Taking a little too long. Y'all excuse me. What's it called? Joseph and Asenith. This will surprise you what it got in here. Um, I'm looking for it right now. Uh, all I know is that Joseph and Asenith comes after the after the prayers of Jacob. Hold on. Yep, should. Hold on. We're going to go to page 699 right quick, and then we're going to go to Joseph and Aston. If y'all excuse me. Uh, hold on. Oh yeah, we also have the Oz of Solomon, which uh, prophesies about Mashiach too. There's a lot of books that the disciples and the apostles quoted, but uh, they they just never met met the quote unquote heathen canon. And the heathen canon has uh, the heathen canon only contains maybe 66 books. When we know that's not true at all. Like there's more than just 66 books. Hold on, y'all. I'm looking for J uh, Joseph and Ashton right now. Give me a second. Uh, here we go, page 177, Salakia. Sorry it took so long. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. So right here in Joseph and Asenith, it talks about uh, how they describe Jacob. And uh, here we go. We're going to go to uh, verse 7. It says, And Asenith saw him and was amazed at his beauty because Jacob was exceedingly beautiful to look at in his old age. So he was a handsome old man. <laughs> like the youth of a handsome young man. So he was, he, black didn't crack, especially not in that time. And his head was white as snow. So it describes his hair just like Yahushua, white as snow. And the hairs of his head were exceedingly close and thick like those of an Ethiopian. And his beard was white, reaching down to his his breast so he had a long beard and he had hair like an Ethiopian so that means Jacob was a black man right so out of a black man and four black women which we know the Syrians were black I've already uh, discussed that uh, like four five times how in the hell do we get three black tribes and four no in and nine Hispanic and Native American looking tribes I just want to know that I hear it throw shade or anything but I just want to know that and uh what's going on UPT what's going on Ock? and uh then we're gonna go to uh, this book right here the travels of Ludovico di Vartima in Egypt Syria desert Arabia Felix and Persia India and Ethiopia eight from eight uh, after the death this of uh, Mashiach is 1503 to 1508 now Ludovico was a Italian he was a Roman Italian what's going on Quincy he was a Roman Italian and uh bro described the Arabs and he described the Jews as black and the Moors. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about, Quincy. Well, you know, you, you kind of way ahead of me. But uh, I'm just here to edify, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> there we go. We're going to go through this book right quick.
But uh, this also makes reference to uh, the book of Acts when Paul, like it says right here, it says Christ, but we know what they mean. It says Mashiach said to Shaul, Saul, Saul. You see, it doesn't say Paul. It says Saul, so we know it's not Paul. Cure me persecuria, which is without the city. So it's basically saying, Mashiach, Mashiach, why are you persecuting me? You know, and uh, what else we got? Oh, yeah, um, this I know a lot of people think that the Jews were for some reason, uh, you know, like the Moors, but there's a distinction between Jews and Moors. Like I said, the Moabites and that, and I, uh, they were the Moors, you know what I mean? So here we go. This is in the chapter. This is describing the Arab. So this is talking about the Badaian Arabs, which is Esau. The book concerning Arabia deserted. The chapter showing the book, just showing the route from Damascus to Mecca, wherein some Arabs are concerned. Now we're going to go. It says, in this mercenary, there is a Lord who named Zambi. He's the Lord of the country. So this is talking about an Arab. Now it says this. They say Arabians are very small men are of a dark tawny color when you look it up it looks just like our skin color some orangeness there too it's a red tint esau and they have a feminine voice long stiff and black hair and truly these are arabs in such vast numbers that they cannot be counted so that's describing their skin color now uh, we're going to talk about the jews right quick says at the eight at the end of the eight days we found a mountain which appeared to be 10 or 12 miles in circumference in which mountain dwelt four or five thousand jews who go naked and are in height five or six spans and have feminine voices and are black and are more black than any color you know what I'm saying? There you go. And then here we go. Distinction between Jews and Moors, which are the Moabites. The Moors are the Moabites. They are circumcised and confess that they are Jews. And if they can get a Moor into their hands, they skin him alive. So they hated the Moors. You know what I'm saying? And we go down here to the footnote. It says, as to, compl as to complexion, if these, if those seem to be our traveler, were like generality of the Jews in Yemen, he aptly describes them as more black than any color and respect they're not to be distinguished from the Arab Badawans, which are Esau. And uh, that's some more stuff. So we just, we just established that the Arabians were black, but check this out. There was a city governed by the master of Cario, the ma the master of it, who is one a brother of Barachet. They are subjected to the Grand Sultan of Caria. There does not occur to be much to say here, for they are Moors. We know the Moors are black. So it's telling you that there are black people in Egypt. What else we got? Uh... Here we go dealing with the Mashiachim. We already know the first quote-unquote Christians were black. But what does it say? Two days afterwards, the Sultan took the field and marched into the said city, Sanaa, with his army, in which there, and his army in which there were three thousand horsemen, and of some Christians or Mashiachim as black as Moors. The Moors. And the Mashiach, Mashiach came, which of the Jews were black. It's dealing with this book. That's enough information out of that book. Like I said, it ain't going to be too short. It ain't going to be too long. And this is out of the last book right here. It's called When We Ruled. Now, I've put, I, I brought this out before on my, on my story. But uh, I'll show you all some of the meat that's in here. So we know the Yoruba Jews of Nigeria were the tribe of Ephraim. Now, does that look like a Puerto Rican or does that look like a Negro? You know what I'm saying? What else we got? Another image right here, Yoruba. It look like a Puerto Rican or that look like a Negro? Like a Negro, right? Mm-hmm. He's talking about a Yoruba. There are other things in here dealing with the Coptic Church. We know the Coptic Church were the Jews. Um, I got another book uh, I'm going to bring out in part two. But this is Great Benin. This is the... 
Great Benin known as Edo. The Edo tribe in Nigeria, by the way. Y'all look it up. The Edo tribe in Nigeria are the Edomites. They call themselves Edomites. Now look at these people. These don't look like Caucasian people, do they? They look like people with Negroid features, don't they? Edo tribe, Edomites. That's who they are. You know what I'm saying? Even another one dealing with the Edomite tribes. Straight East, straight Black. Esau. You know, I got other stuff in there dealing with the Ethiopians, the tribe of Dan, first Christian church in Africa, by the way. Um, with that being said, I wish grace and peace unto you all. I wish you all have a great night. Shalom.